Okay, so I finished up the editing on part one of lesson 11 and went back to my lab and realized that server one and server two had shut down. And I was like, oh, I bet you I know what that is. And when I logged on, lo and behold, server license is expired. So what do we need to do? We need to do the license rearm. So, so we need to open up a command admin, admin command prompt. And we're going to type in slmgr dot vbs slash rearm. And we need to restart. So then I'm going to type in shut down dash r for restart dash t for in this time zero seconds. So in other words, restart now. And we're going to do the same thing over on server 2. slmgr.vbs slash rearm Okay, and shut down. Restart in time, zero seconds. Let's see if server one's coming back up yet. I checked my DC one and it's fine. So at some point, maybe I have to do that again, but it doesn't look like I have to do that on the DC one, at least not right now. We're gonna put in our password. So again, if you're working in your lab, you come back to it and your servers are shut down, check that message on the desktop and see if it's telling you that the license is expired. If it is, you have to go in admin command prompt, run slmgr.vbs space slash rearm. Well, here comes our server manager. I'll maximize that so I got something to work with. <clears throat> Over here on server two. Let's get logged on there. And we should be good shape. Okay, so we're set to start exercise 11.3, which is installing and configuring branch cache on a file server. So we've completed our DFS exercise. Understand branch cache allows for WAN acceleration functionality by using multiple systems to create a cache infrastructure, which is used to per increase performance of websites and shared folders. So on server one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click manage, add roles and features. We're going to go next, next, next and I just realized I'm on server 2 I'm going to click cancel and I'm going to jump over to server 1 make sure you're doing this on server 1 don't make a mistake like I was just going to do so add roles and features next 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 and we're going to expand the file and storage services again we're going to expand file and iSCSI services we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to select branch cache for network files. We click next, next, and install. Once your installation has completed, take a screenshot and paste it in to step number eight. And we're done. Okay, we're going to click close. And we're going to jump over to our LUN DC1. We're going to go Tools. We're going to go into ADUC, Active Directory Users and Computers. We're going to right click on a datum.com and choose New Organizational Unit. 
we're going to name that servers and click OK. Our servers organization unit has been created. We can close Active Directory users and computers. We're going to click Tools, Group Policy Management. When it starts up, we're going to go, if it's not already expanded, expand your forest, expand your domains, and select a datum. Expand a datum. Okay, so we're going to right click our server's organizational unit. And we're going to choose create a group policy in this domain and link it here. We're going to name that branch cache for servers. And click OK. Expand the servers OU right-click and choose edit. We're editing our branch cache for servers group policy object. I'm going to make this a little bit larger so it's a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to move my center bar over so my window on my left pane is a little bit larger. And I'm going to expand computer configuration policies administrative templates network and under network we're going to select LAN MAN server so question 7 is what must all servers in a branch cache infrastructure have? Well, they all have to have the same hash publication policy. There's your answer. You got it. They must have, they, they all must have the same hash publication policy. Double click hash publication for branch cache. In the dialog box, select Enabled. And allow hash publication for all share folders is already selected. Go ahead and take a screenshot and paste it into step 24. If you've got your screenshot, click OK. We can now see that it's enabled. Close the Group Policy Editor. We're going to jump back over to server one and I'm going to select File Explorer and we're going to expand this PC. I'm going to select the C drive and I'm going to say New Folder and I'm going to name it Shared Folder. I'm going to right click and go to properties. We're going to click the sharing tab. We're going to click advanced sharing. We're going to say share this folder and then click OK. Click close to file to close the properties. And go ahead and click close for your Windows Explorer. Now on server one, we're going to go to tools computer management take just a second under computer management under system tools we're going to expand the shared folders click shares if you can't see it move your divider over a little bit right click shared folder and select properties in the properties dialog box on the general tab click offline settings ensure 
that only the files and programs that users specify are available offline. So only the files and programs that users specify are available off. Then select Enable Branch Cache. If you've got these two settings, go ahead and take a screenshot, paste it into step number 40. If you've got your screenshot, click OK and click OK and click Computer Close Computer Management. Jumping back over to our LUN-DC1, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on the branch cache for servers GPO again and select edit. We're going to expand the computer configuration, policies, administrative templates, networks node, and then, oh, I selected print network uh, printers instead of network. I got to expand it, and here you can see branch cache. And yes, I'm working from home, as you all know, and I've got a dog poking me in the side. Evidently, he needs to go outside, and I don't want to clean up a mess. I know that's too much information, but you got it. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Let's see, where were we before I was so rudely interrupted by a poke in the side? Ah, yes, we navigated in computer configuration to policies, administrative templates, network, branch cache. So here in branch cache, I'm going to expand this open, open a little bit more, make it easier to read what's there. And I'm going to look for set branch cache distributed cache mode. We're going to double click on that. And we're going to enable it. I'm going to click OK. So with that enabled, go ahead and take a screenshot and paste that into step number 48. If you've got your screenshot, go ahead and close your Group Policy Management Editor. And you can close Group Policy Management. So now the one last thing that we need to do is we need to, to have this take effect, we need, we would need to move or we're not going to do it. I don't want you to do it. but because that group policy is applied to the server OU that we created, you would need to move any server that you want to have that policy applied to, to the server OU. Don't do it, like I said, but understand that that would be the process. That would be the final process. Then that policy could apply to that computer. Okay, so let's perform our lab challenge, Configuring Print Services. Understand a basic service needed by most enterprise organizations is network printing. When you print a document, the client computer will submit the print jobs to the print server for delivery to a printer that is connected to the network. In many organizations, a large network printer will be available that can be used by multiple users. If you have an organization, let's say you have a, a business and there are 50 different users and you've got three different departments, it's much more efficient to have uh, half a dozen or so networked printers that the users can use rather than trying to manage a printer connected by USB to everyone's computer. What costs more? Five really good network printers or 50 individual printers that use ink jets they, they, the consumables are very expensive, you've got USBs, you've got configurations, I can't print this, I can't do that, I need color, I need black and white. By manage them as network printers, it's much more efficient. So on our server one, I'm going, going to click and go back over to server one. Need to log back in. And we're going to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. And like everyone, every other time, it's Next, Next, Next. And on the roles, we're going to select Print and Document Services. We're going to add our features. We're going to click Next. 
We're going to click Next. On the Print and Document Services page, just gives you information about what, what might be of note. Click Next. We are using a print server. It's already selected. That's what we want to do. We click Next. We confirm our settings and we click Install. It's going to take just a moment. When your installation of this role is installed, completed, go ahead and take a screenshot, paste it into step number 11. And we are done. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to close that installation wizard. We're now going to go up to tools and we're going to select a new option, new tool, print management. We'll go ahead and we're going to expand the print servers node. There's our LUN server one. We're going to click on it. I'm going to right click and choose add printer. And we're going to select add a new printer using an existing port. And we're going to use the virtual L LPT1 port. We're going to click next. On the printer driver, we're going to say install new drivers already selected. So we're going to click next. On the installation page we're going to scroll the left hand column down till we see HP. We're going to select HP and then on the right hand side select HP Color Jet Color Laser Jet 2500 PCL6 class driver. Click Next. On the printer name go ahead and click Next. Before we click next, sorry about that, answer the following question. What's the share name? Okay, real hard. There's your answer. That's the share name. Now we can go ahead and that, click next after you've answered question number eight. On the printer found, it's there. We click next. It's installing. It's in successful. And we click finish. Now under LUN Server 1, we click if we click on the printers, it takes a moment to refresh, and there is our printer. Go ahead and take a screenshot showing the successful installation of your HP Color Laser uh, Color Laser Jet and paste that into step number 23. Go ahead and right click after getting your screenshot, right click on the HP Color Laser Jet and go to Properties. Click on the Sharing tab. Note the share name. Now if we want this to be listed in Active Directory we need to select List in Active Directory. This, would, this will enable it to be published in Active Directory for other computers or other users to install. Click on the Ports tab. Notice what port it is assigned to. Select the Security tab. And who, for question number nine, who is allowed to print to this printer? Print, allow, everyone. Everyone. Select the Administrators group. Question number 10. Which permissions are assigned to administrator? Administrator has permissions for print, manage this printer, and manage documents. Select everyone once more. Select allow manage documents. Okay, had a little lag there. Thought it wasn't responding. And once you've got Manage Documents allowed for everyone, go ahead and click OK. You've completed Lesson 11. Thank you.